Good evening. How are you? Well, according to Thomas Jefferson, who uh, hasn't been in Georgia in a long time, <laughs> the uh, temperature is about 70, has been all day. The humidity is down in the 20s and the wind is three miles an hour. Uh, the woods are still, and if there is a wind, I haven't been able to see it. I spent the day uh, with my, uh, with Holly, of course, and with her siblings, uh, going to uh, various mountain sites and getting a sense of historically what this area was about, but also at one point uh, sitting in a uh, meditative uh, yogic stance uh, by one of the rivers at uh, Anna Ruby. The um, News today consists of two things plus. The two things which abide by uh, emergencies starting in the last few days, of course, are what's happening in the Middle East and whether or not uh, Biden and the Democrats and independents and some Republicans will resist the effort to just go into a war with Iran and to supply and do as active wars to supply the material necessary to that fight. It's been uh, past leaders who have informed us that having more than one front in a war is never wise. You know, you can go back to Alexander the Great, or you can look at Napoleon, or you could look at uh, Hitler. Any of these people learn the hard way that a war front in two directions is a suicide pact for your own aggrandizement, if you will. And then, of course, we have the dock worker strike, and that's going to be a difficult problem because it... Uh, is critical to the East Coast that uh, we not have that difficulty, that we not have uh, a, a long strike. And when I say I, I'm not against the strike, what I am arguing for is negotiations to end the strike by valuing the work of the dock workers for the productions they bring that created the income that their employers want to keep for themselves without sharing the productivity and gain from the dock workers. The uh, continuous concern, of course, is what do we think last night meant? The, normally, the argument between vice presidents is a lesser story. And that's true in this campaign, and it's not in another way. And the way it's not is apparently uh, others saw the debate the way I did, including those who responded to what I put up yesterday uh, and my comments on the, on the debate after it was over. And the critical point, it seems to me, is uh, we have J.D. Vance basically refusing to answer a question about whether or not Trump won the election, suggesting that he would lie as much as Trump and can't deviate in that regard. Well, we know that Trump lost. And we know this is a point of chaos. And we know this is a point of concern. And Tim Waltz, who is conceitedly not a debater, but he's an honest man, and he knows how to make an argument, and he does have a lot of energy. And he's not Kamala, but he's our, he's our, our peacemaker uh, in a way. I don't know how to describe him yet, but I, I'm learning about him. He, he's, he's fighting for the ticket, but he's also got this soul that reaches out under the worst of circumstances to find a solution. As a team, I think that's great. You know, it's a flip of the usual thing in which the vice president is the hungry dog, junkyard dog, and the, the presidential candidate kind of rides above it. Well, uh, in my opinion, uh, our vice president, Kamala Harris, she has not ridden above it, but she's been in it and she's done it with class. And she sticks as closely as possible to the facts, does her research, presents it, and has a way of focusing the message so that it has a lot of power. Well, Tim did that at the end of the debate last night, which, in my opinion, tipped the whole debate to him. Because he said Pence would be here but for the f refusal of Trump to accept the results of an appropriate election. And that hit home. And also, he's not here, and his president abandoned him, you know, talking about basically hanging him uh, for his failure to do what Trump wanted him to do, which was unconstitutional, unlawful, and illegal. So we, we have a feeling of this thing working. And what I did wonder about, and my brother-in-law, uh, Sonny, was with me, Sonny Smith, when uh, his real name is David, but Sonny was to distinguish him from his dad, and they 
he has the character traits, but he, uh, people prefer the name Sonny. We were at Walmart when we spoke to this woman, and uh, she said, she volunteered in a conversation that veered into this, that she was working part-time and she was coming back more, and one of them was she had medical issues, and but for Obamacare, the, uh, she, she would be lost. She would be lost. And so then I, that I then took to say, so uh, are you supporting Kamala? And uh, she said, well, you know, some of my friends have told me that. So we found a pure undecided voter. And the question is, during the debate, did that part of the discussion affect her? Now, I won't see her probably, although we may go to that store again. Um, but um, the question that we have is did the debate move people into that with the particular interest they had for the different issues that were being raised? I thought the rationale that the team has presented was consistent at that debate. Whereas, and I think this is known by the public, uh, J.D., uh, he tried to reinvent himself. I thought he presented himself as a smoother, more articulate fellow, and that was fine until he was fact-checked, and then his persona, his image, his, his posture changed, and they had to shut off his mic. And because Tim tried to engage in that conversation, his mic was cut off as well. And I points to the network for doing that. But what it did was it underscored we had a fellow who was conning us. That's not who he was. Now, a couple of times I wondered if he tried to be agreeable with Tim to offset the image of him talking nonsense about uh, Haitians um, eating pets, which is nonsense and has been, been proven eight different ways to be false. So he, he tried not to go near that, but he tried to have other explanations. So it's, there are some arguments that are like a grenade in this sense. You roll it out on the floor and then just sort of say, so, and then all of a sudden you have this elucidation that this is a problem. I think that's what's going to bring down the Republican ticket because they, can't, they still can't figure out what their line of sight is, what their objective is, and they can't sell it because they don't know what they're selling. What they're selling is fear and hate. And what Tim said best is that we don't need this. We don't want a nation of fear and hate. And when we have at hand crises like, what do we do with workers? How do we help that situation reach an agreement? And when we have uh, the question in the Middle East and we have the question uh, in Ukraine, how do we handle those things? These require sober, disciplined thinking, looking at precedents and weighing the pros and cons and looking down the road. Now, I spoke about game theory the other day. If you come to the table and you can't agree on certain things, that presents an additional problem. If you do not want to have an outcome, that presents a problem. If your own side can't agree, like Russia, uh, like, uh, it's interesting I say Russians, but Republicans and Democrats can't agree. And why? Because the Republicans are stepping aside to favor, well, what they think favors them the best. And Netanyahu has proven himself to be as much a dictator as other people have in this play. And the election confuses what people should do. When in doubt, do the right thing. When in doubt, use the facts. When in doubt, fight for what is right. And then let the chips fall where they may. That's what we need. That's, that's what America is known for. That is having that, you know, I've said it for the Irish, is this a private fight or can anyone mix in? This is not a private fight, this is a public fight. We have to mix in and we have to mix in in the way that we have already that resulted in the ticket that we have that I think is still showing us honor and grace and dignity and respect and has the potential to make these years the best years of not just America's life but the world's. So. Uh, that's what I have today, and uh, I'll be probably out climbing different places tomorrow, and uh, maybe I'll find a road I can walk along and take you with me. All the best. Bye-bye.